We're back with a good buddy of mine for many, many years, and a mentor of mine, actually, uh, for many years, uh, Dick Blood, the former editor of the Star Beacon. And uh, Dick, welcome. How you been doing? Real good, real good. Yeah. My, I want to apologize. My wife said, are you going to be on TV? And I, because she had, had to go to the, get a blood test this morning. Mm -hmm. Did you going to wear two shirts? <laughs> I told Dick, it's well, cold you're a country now. Boy. You're a country boy, well, Dick. It was, it was cold this morning when you get up. <laughs> it's so funny because I, I wear shorts in the wintertime. I said, I know something about my legs don't get cold, but my chest. Yeah, yeah right. Well, you got to protect that. There you go. You know, Dick, I don't. you probably don't remember this, but I first met you in August of 1968. You were then the editor of the News Herald. Oh, yeah. And uh, Tom Cooley was your city editor. Uh, and for some reason they hired me there. I had no experience whatsoever. <laughs> and uh, uh, you weren't there very long because you got promoted to Ashtabula. I think um, Mr. Smith, I can't remember. Sir. Ross. Ross Smith. Yeah, he had a stroke. And uh, I don't know if they necessarily were grooming me to take over up there. But it turned out, you know, that he yeah. I did, I think, within a year become editor up there. Yeah. And How long were you editor at the Star Beacon? Well, it was in... Um, 69, I remember probably. Now. It's probably 69. Um, something, maybe 68 or 69, until 85. That's when you left. Yeah. I worked on the Great American Novel <laughs> that summer. Because, you know, the new owners took over and I didn't get along with them. So right, I, right. And anyway, um, then John Lamson called me from Jefferson, you know. <clears throat> And so I worked there for a couple of years before mm -hmm. I um, went with, here. With Jim, wasn't Jim Booth there too? Yeah, Jim. It was so funny because Jim and I had worked to, together, you know, at the Star Beacon and uh, would do the same thing at, at uh, Erie, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. Because in fact, I, I'm trying to think about taking Jim's place or not, but it was so funny because uh, I'd had a gallbladder problem then in the physician said so I should have surgery. And I said, well, I'm just starting a new job. I, right. I, you know, mm -hmm. I was working in Meadville Bureau, and uh, I don't know if they're going to hold the job. <laughs> I waited too long, and, uh -huh. and I uh, apologize to your viewers, but I waited so long that uh, Jan Green didn't start to say when they operated. Yeah, that's not good. And so I was off for two months, and they held a job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 They were 10 terrific years because uh, I was essentially my own boss in Meadville mm -hmm. and worked mostly for the Sunday paper mm -hmm. and uh, I didn't have any weekends <laughs> so actually you lived in Meadville during the week yeah I did and uh, in fact that was supposedly one of the conditions of the my employment there but I mean I was really lucky Pat because I worked for three family newspapers all great people like uh, the Raleigh's yep um, the Lampsons, and then of course the Meads over in, in the yeah. Erie. And I was so lucky that way because I know, am, we just I had am. a brief stint there where we had this, these people that moved from the East Coast to take Singleton over. Singleton and Take over. And, yeah. oh my God, what I, got a, I got a little story about okay. this. Uh, actually, um, when the new, I worked for the same three publishers, the mm -hmm. families that Dick just mentioned, the Rowleys. Uh, uh, Lampsons and, and the Meads also. And uh, the Meads was because on Saturdays he would have Saturday off, and I was in Booth hired me to go out there. <laughs> I'm sorry, and, I did that to you. Back. <laughs> and, and I would sit there from one o'clock until nine or ten. I can't remember. And there was nothing happening. One day there was a, a tragic fire that I did cover, and uh, that was about the major thing that happened the entire time I did it. But. Um, I was in between jobs and it helped me out, you know, and uh, it, it was a lot of fun. But uh, um, what happened, I had to tell this story. Um, when the new owners of the New Herald and Star Beacon took over in the Telegraph then, um, we'd have these meetings with the new owners and uh, <laughs> they gave us computers. I was never trained to do it and, and Dick knew this. Dick had been around enough that he knew that, you know, I wasn't ready for this. And they're, they're, I was in a meeting, and these new owners are tearing me apart. I mean, I mean, it was brutal. And Dick actually stuck up for me. I'll never forget it. As long as I live, I've told my wife this story many times. 
I go Dick Blood. I was getting beat up. I was a little wimp about it because I, you know, I this is my job, and I wasn't any good at what they were telling me I was trying to do. Dick stuck up and he goes, "Wait a minute. He hasn't had any training. You know, what do you expect from him?" And I'll never. They backed off, and I'll never forget it. It wasn't long after, probably another couple months. Dick came up to me on a Friday night, I think it was, and said, I'm, I'm out of here. I, he just kind of left. He just didn't, couldn't live with that situation there. Mm. They weren't fair. A lot of, the, well, a lot of people mean, lost their jobs. Lie, they always lied through their teeth. I mean, I remember uh, this one executive sat on one of the, you know, the desk in the newsroom and said, your grandchildren and my grandchildren were... <laughs> We'll work together. And they were out of there within a couple of years. Oh yeah, they sold out. I mean, that's I what they were. It, I could see it, right? You know, see it. You know, you spend that many years in this paper. You get. That's why I love Judge Judge, Judge Judy because he's the greatest <laughs> barometer of truth telling. Yeah, right. And she the opposite. Seems to know. I wish he'd run for president. <laughs> yeah, we have her for dinner it. every night. <laughs> she tells people to think she's too brutal, but I swear she can find a liar so her. fast. Yeah, she can pick it out. She can pick it out. She, you know, that's really essentially what a newspaper person was supposed to do too, you yeah. know, is to... Uh, Read between the lines. Yeah. And, and right. Dick, Dick, when did you start with the newspaper? That was so funny because I always loved sports, you know. Right. And so uh, they had the opening for sports writer there at Conyas, you know. So I started in 62, I think it was February of 62. 62. And uh, that was probably the most enjoyable. I think I was there for a year or two. And that was one of the most enjoyable times in the newspaper. Not that I didn't love the other, but to, to make more money, you had to take more responsibility right. to become an editor and all this. But I just love sports. And uh, What year did you graduate? You graduated from Morale, right? Yeah, in 53. In 53? Yeah. We still have breakfasts up at uh, Conyet Perkins. I get announcements yeah. of those every yeah. now and then. Yeah. And uh, we enjoy ourselves. But um, well, what, No, you went to college. Yeah, which we, how you. Ohio. See, I didn't. Finished in five years because I had to take uh, take off, or I think I had appendicitis or something. One year, I forget what it was. So I worked my way through college. It was so funny because I was telling somebody they couldn't believe this that my tuition for a semester was 130 bucks. Well, <laughs> Can you imagine yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. That makes how ancient I am, you know. Well, mine was only 200 bucks yeah. in '66. So. And I had a board job, which meant you know I eat. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think I, when I worked, when I lived at Tiffin Hall, it was only like $90 a semester there to stay. So, wow. and then I worked uh, summers, like uh, I worked for Bud Rhodes, you know, he was an East County uh, plaster uh, contractor and that, those were enjoyable years. And uh, it was so funny because Bud had apologized one time because he was going to lay me off because a fella who had worked for him before was coming back from the service. and. Mm -hmm. And I can see why he had to give him the job. But he took me out and introduced me to the superintendent of Harrison Construction that's building Interstate 90. <laughs> oh, really? And you talk about fate. I mean, I made a heck of a lot more money because I was working 60 hours a week, you know, in the summer. Right. And, uh, and uh, I always remember one time I had to do the, uh, the uh, patrol the right away there well, before the road was open uh -huh. around 4th of July. <laughs> and I, I was kind of low on gas, so I went to one of the pumps there and put, it turned out to be diesel fuel. Oh, <laughs> <no. life. laughs> so I went up to Pop's gas station, you know, I had that hot yeah, octane. Yeah, I right. filled it up with that. <laughs> did it work? Funny. It did, yeah, I mean, that cleared it right up. <laughs> I think I had a 49. Your pressure. brother was in the profession too, in David. Dave, yeah, he uh, went on to raise his family out in Oregon. John Day, Oregon. I don't know if you ever heard of that or not, but uh, he was a good buddy of mine, and yeah, uh, we worked Dave together. Was a good for, guy. Yeah, he died very young from symptoms from Agent Orange, wasn't it? Yeah, he had served in Vietnam in the infantry in 101st Airborne, I think, and uh, he was exposed to that. And I always remember he said, "If I could live long enough to see my kids graduate, well, turned out he only survived about a year." And uh, uh, he was probably, what, in his 30s when he passed away? Or 40s. 40s? Was yeah, it? see, he was 10 years younger. It's so funny, in our family, we had uh, nine children. <laughs> well, I relate to that. Do you really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, Dave was the youngest. And one we called Junior, he was Edgar C. Junior. He was mentally retarded, but not severely so. But, but uh, that, his death really struck me hard because I just thought that we didn't give him enough of a 
support or whatever. But anyway, there, there you are. I'm right in the middle. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was 10 years older than Dave and 10 years younger than Junior. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And fortunately, both of them are gone now. But uh, yeah, Dave is uh, uh, just the most uh, upbeat type of person. Yeah, he was. Five beautiful children. We went to his oldest boys. His oldest boy lives at, he's got a, a computer business in. Uh, in Boston, we went to his wedding in the in the mountains there on the East Coast, and that was beautiful. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, that's good. David was a good guy. We always called him Yogi. Yeah, you're was, right. Like, Yogi. Uh, yeah. And, of course, you uh, got a name like Blood. I mean, there's all kinds. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. That's you could, but he, he was a you know he was a good newsman, and yeah. uh, he was so calm. And we'd be in some messes together, and uh, he, well, we can get through this. We, we can handle this. And he was very calm, and I was a nervous wreck because I was the rookie. You know, I was a young guy, but he, he's a good guy. Uh, good morning, you're on. Well, call back five nine three seven one eight one. You can call and talk to Dick if you like. Probably a lot of people out there that remember Dick Blood from the from the days gone by. I've been wanting to do this interview forever, and we never could make connections. And one of the reasons I wanted to make the to do the interview is because Dick and I go back to the era of the the sixties, basically um, 50s, 60s, uh, uh, up until the eighties. Um, I, I lasted until the the early part of two thousand. I think two thousand four, and I had to get out. It was like too many years of doing newspapers. The deadline's still are on my head, Dick. I oh, still, yeah. I still you, have you still have dreams, probably. I don't do. You? I do. Nightmares. <laughs> Nightmares. <laughs> Did I, did I miss a press run or something? But something, you know, when you get out of college and you take a job and so forth, you have nightmares about you having an exam. And then after you get older in the right. newspaper business, you, yeah. you're all you can think of, all you wake you up these deadlines, you know. <laughs> and, you know, I still have dreams like the people that are gone now, like the Tom Cooleys and all oh, yeah. those. I, they're always popping up, and it's like they're still alive. It's like, yeah. geez, I must have really dedicated my life sure. to this. There. Yeah. Uh, let's see what we got here. Hi, you're on the air. Good morning, Dick and Steve and Pat. How are you? Good, Shirley. How are hi, you? Shirley. Hi. I just wanted to say hi to Dick. His family was our neighbors on uh, Furnace Road and on Dorman Road. Shirley Benton. Oh, yep. okay, great. Hi, Shirley. <laughs> How are you doing? Real good. Um, I probably went to school with Donna. I did, yes. Uh, yeah. Many, many... Two moons ago, not too many moons ago, <laughs> yeah. two moons ago. I just wanted to say hi and how great you look, and it's glad to see one of our old neighbors still around. Yeah, another Rao uh, yeah. graduate there. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, yeah, you folks lived just less than, I don't know, it was, we were on uh, the... Um, were you on Dorman we, Road? No, no, we're talking about Furnace Road now. Yeah. And I, I was on the west, no, the east side. Yeah. And you were on the west side, just up about one house. You know. Yeah. Because you were yeah. right in, you're right in line with Fenton Avenue, I think. Er, no, not yeah. Fenton, Bessemer. Yeah. When you come Bessemer. down Fenton, you run right into where I was born. I'll be there. Bessemer, yeah, Bessemer. And, there, there. and then we moved down, uh, yeah, Bessemer, not Fenton. Then you, we moved over to Dorman. Oh yeah, we were neighbors over there too. Yeah, pretty soon you guys was across the street from <laughs> us there. Wow. But that's just really great to see you and you take Good care. Good to hear from you too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, Shirley. Bye, Thank Shirley. you for calling. Yeah, I, I remember the Dorman Road residence because uh, I'll tell you why. Danny Vorst was my good, good friend. The Vorses lived on Dorman Road before they moved to Welton Road. Oh, yeah. And uh, that goes back a ways. Yeah. You, know, you start to forget some of this oh, stuff. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Easy to do. Hi, you're on the air. Yeah, good morning, Pat. This is Mrs. Owen. I'd like to wish Tom Mix a belated happy birthday, if you would, please. Tom Mix? Yeah. Okay. He, he, I missed his birthday the other day, so... I just thought I'd call in a belated one to him. Okay, well, happy birthday. Do you know an horrible mix? Like the rest of us, he's in his early 70s now. Early 70s, a mix, I believe. Yeah, but I say, do, do they uh, remember an Orville? Do you remember an Orville, Orville mix? mix? Yep, I do. You I do? know Orville. Wasn't Tom Mix? And then there was, a, there was a sister there. What was her name? Uh, Millie or Wilma Jean. Wilma Jean, yeah. I'll forget to say. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't, uh, 
No, was it Wilma G? Just let me interrupt just a second. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But Wilma G, was she? She's in Douglas County, if you know. Yeah, I was going to say, Pennsylvania, I remember. Yeah, Go ahead, Pat, I'm sorry. Uh, you know, isn't Tom Mix related to the silent movie actor, really? Tom Mix? Oh. I, I think, be, I think yeah. the Mix family is related he, to the original. Related to, Tom Mix is related to all those two. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, happy birthday to Tom. I didn't realize right. that. His yeah. mother, his mother married a hobo. Okay. Hobo. Okay. Talking about a western. Yeah. yeah. Great. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Bye bye. Talking about westerns, uh, uh, John Wayne. Their TCM was doing. You know. I watched it all week. Did you? Yeah. But did you see the one where they had the guest <laughs> host there talking about a woman named Phyllis Isley? Missed it. Her name is became Jennifer Jones. Is that right? One of the most famous dramatic yeah, actors. Yeah, great actress. She won an Academy Award for uh, the uh, what was that one? Oh, the one with the uh, Saint of the Sainthood. Sainthood, yes. Yeah. yeah. And Song of Bernadette. Song of Bernadette. Song of Bernadette. And she would nominate four other times, and it was you know go whip a tedia or whatever you call it. You can get such interesting information. Mm -hmm. Who said that she became a good friend of Ingrid Bergman? In fact, when she won for the song of Bernadette, she apologized to Ingrid because she was also nominated. Yeah, and yeah. Ingrid uh -huh. said, "No, no, you." Oh, you she know, did a tremendous job. Yeah, in that movie. but mm -hmm. just just to see that woman in that role, because what it was, and this this host told the story how that there's this one. Her father had a, owned a bunch of theaters, and so he got a hold of Republic Studios. He knew somebody there and said, "You know, my daughter wants to become an actress." <laughs> you think you can find something for her? <laughs> John Wayne had made stage coach in uh, 39. One of your favorite movies. Oh, I say that's probably, in terms of black and white, I mean, it's better than anything. I mean, for his time, Pat, yeah. I mean, 39, of course, that was the year, the golden year for Hollywood because it you was. had Wizard of Oz and you had Gone with the Wind, Wind, all the classics. Mm -hmm. But anyway, she got what it was is John Wayne had been directed by John Ford, you know, in that movie, and uh, then he had this still had this contract with Republic, and those were really B pictures, right? Know? So he was kind of disgruntled, you know. They had to go back and make more of these movies, but I just thought it was so interesting that this future actress would be in a she was actually the leading lady in that movie. Is that right? <laughs> yeah. and, and they used the original name before Jennifer Jones. Did they use? Yeah, the, Phyllis did, Isley was no, on, I didn't, on, I did, on didn't the, pick it on up. The thing. Yeah, but uh, um, I must have like eight thousand movies on DVD. I, I love John Wayne movies, so you know I've been in heaven all week long. Like last <laughs> night, they had uh, uh, Shepherd of uh, was it Shepherd of the Hills. Uh, um, Red River, you know. Yeah, I mean, Red River is a darn good. Movie it was a darn good movie. Yeah. And and I and I was I was watching some you know, uh, earlier or later movies uh, in color. I go, you can't beat these old black and whites. Yeah. yeah. You know. And when they colorized them, it kind of took a lot out yeah, of them. Sure did. They, they didn't do it to these mm -hmm. particular ones. When you started out, um, even when I started out, we we didn't even have off set presses back then. We remember the old presses that they oh, used yeah. to have and. The way they had to put the tape together and all that stuff. Oh, right. Now it's all computer. Steve Wassey was a, a Steve Wassey, yes. yes. And it started, I'm talking about yeah. the News Herald now, because mm -hmm. that's yeah. where my yeah. orientation came was right. like, in the uh, there. And, uh, and I always remember the assassination of John Kennedy because I was going to ask you, you yeah, were there, right? Well, I was there, and it was you know it was just so depressing, you know, as the news came over, you know, right? That, mm -hmm. uh, because of course, first they said there's been a Tempted, and then of course they they didn't announce it. Right. I think even after they knew he'd been he died. Did, what what happened, Dick? I mean, because it was late. The, back then, the deadline was probably close. The, the assassination was at what twelve o'clock. Yeah, it was right through. around. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and I know that we held a, held the paper for a while there. And yeah, I, I think I think we got in the fact that he was he had died. You got you got it in because yeah. I have the paper. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it was. Uh, it's one of those things that happens, you know, so infrequently that it's just a, you know, worldwide significance, that kind of a piece of news. So Jimmy Moen would have been the editor Jimmy, yeah, then? Yeah, Jim was Moen. Jimmy Moen was the editor and Tom was city editor. Mm -hmm. I always remember Tom. 
He's a nice guy. Tom used to have it. It was his domain to guard the parking lot. Brian yeah, Schroeder's yeah, yeah. falling. He spent half his time. Before an invasion. Even looking at the wire and then looking out of that lot and seeing yeah. if there was any, anybody who sh was parking it <laughs> shouldn't be there. <laughs> when you think of all the important things you're supposed to do with it. He was a highly intense um, fellow. He was, yeah. yeah. What about Ron Mason? He was there then. Was yeah, Ron he? was there. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, have you ever heard from him? I haven't really. No, I haven't. I haven't either. I just got. See, be... Ron was Ron was still there when. Um, or where was he? No, he, I'm trying to think whether he was in the Builder or not. But when uh, I left, because we used to have to go to these meetings. I think they were in Painesville sometimes. Yeah. When you when you left, he was there until probably. When Herb Thompson just passed away, came in. He Herb Thompson replaced Ron, so that had to be in the seventies, early seventies. And then Herb came in, and then after Herb left uh, to go to Ashtabula, Daryl Hicks, Connie boy, took over and ran it until the day the Singletons, you know. took, or Singleton and Bazetta took over. Um, yeah, there was a lot of well-known names. Sophie Seeger, who's still alive, still lives at. Oh, uh, Sophie is. Sophie is about hundred years old now. Because her husband worked. Clyde. Clyde. In yeah. Chambosi, I think. Yes, he did. Yeah. Yes, he did. They started with. I, I was going to say, yeah, he was class. Or he was in advertising. Advertising. Yeah. 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 yeah we they were. I mean, they were people. I. They were terrific days. I mean, uh, so funny because I went to college and majored in English. I really what what I wanted to do. And sometime I'm going to write a story about this. My grandfather, Ralph, you know Ralph Munger now, mm -hmm. his dad uh, uh, <clears throat> planted a, a English walnut tree in our backyard. And this climate is not really ideal for English walnuts. <laughs> but and the thing didn't uh, produce every year or whatever. But this past fall was the most productive that I'd seen, and uh, uh, just the joy of getting up every morning and going out and finding what had fallen, you know, and harvest these nuts because Marie's a terrific cook, my wife. Oh, absolutely. And she makes banana bread and she puts walnuts in it. Mm. Oh, and I have it with my brand, which I have to say brand. But anyway, but um, I, I wanted to be a farmer when I got, when I was in high school, you yeah, know. I remember you telling me that. Yeah. And so I didn't take college prep in, in high school at all. And so when I finally got to college, I had to take like plain geometry and mm -hmm. and uh, chemistry and things like that. Because I wanted to get a liberal arts degree. Right. But I majored in English and uh, what had happened was that uh, I was going to write the Great American Novel. I did finally write the novel. It's called Then I Drowned. It was about a, a true story about a girl who was born in the in, uh, United States who was more or less or you call child nap, taken to Germany, and grew up in Nazi Germany, and uh, uh, how that when her mother finally found her way over in 1938 before the war, mm -hmm. her daughter, who was then 10 years old, the first words to her were Heil Hitler, because she wow. thought her mother had abandoned her. Mm. But no, her father I remember when you were writing that. And, but anyway, it uh, was a heck of a story, and I uh, finally got it done. 2000, what year was that? I think it was 2009 or 10. But you, started, started, you could, started back in the oh, 80s. Oh, I did way, way back. Because see, Vicki Schlosser, who had all coal realty, she is the half-sister of Joyce, the main character in this book. Is that right? Yeah. I never knew that. Yeah. Joyce was born in 1928 in Erie, and um, um, her sister was born in 1939. But anyway, she's the one who came to me the story, and I just was flabbergasted because a true story about somebody who was taken to Nazi, grew up, came over, then finally, uh, after the war, she wrote this Joyce wrote her mother here in America because she had she had uh, she was behind the Iron Curtain because she was in East Germany and uh, near Czechoslovakia. But anyway, uh, she wrote her mother and. Uh, uh, and they finally reunited in uh, in New York Harbor, and it's just and what it was is the name of the book. Uh, then I drowned is a dream that she had from childhood on, because what it was is even after they were reunited, they could not talk about her father, 
Celeste, her mother's husband, because, you know, there was so much. And so they could never get past what this dream was all about. And what it was, it all went back to the day that she was stolen from her mother. She was four years old. Hmm. You know, when you're that age, you don't remember a lot. Hmm. But she remembers, you know, that the, then I drowned was that because she finds herself in the middle of this water and it's just rising all around her. And she, then this hand reaches out to rescue her and, and then the hand pulls away and she, then I drowned. That's what the thing. And what it all went back to, the day she was stolen, she was in Niagara Falls and, and uh, her father was supposedly taking his folks, they had come over from Germany, to, the, to New York City to get on the boat to go back to Germany. But he had planned all along that they're going to, he's going to take Joyce with him and they're going to go on. And Joyce, you know, at four years knew this was going to happen. Hmm. And she loved her mother dearly. And, and uh, so what it was that in her uh, growing up years, she had this nightmare about this. And that was that there was dew on the window the, the day that they took her, you know, heavy dew. And then she's looking out the window at her. Her mother trying to reach and her mother's like waving to her because she thinks she's just going to go to New York Harbor and come back home. But that was the day that... Uh, that Is she that still day. living today? Yes. Is she really? They live in suburban Columbus. Yeah. Really? I made several trips down there. Oh, you've, you've sat with her? Just them. a terrific person. Did uh, uh, did you get an agent or anything try to sell the story? or? Well, I tell you, I just uh, submitted it to Barnes & Noble as an e-book. So it's in... It's in uh, it's available. Yeah? By ebook, yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. I wasn't aware of that. Okay. And everybody who's read it really loves it, but uh, I never really went out on any kind of speaking tour or anything like that. Are you doing any videos? You, used to, you got into videos when you got retired. Oh, yeah. I did the Covered Bridge show. You did those birds, too. I remember you, you, oh, yeah. you gave me a so copy. I just love finches, you know. And, uh, <laughs> I, we donated probably, I don't know, a thousand copies of that Finch video to school. It was great. And, um, because they they always nested on our front porch. So you put a camera there and, and you watch the nesting oh. process and, and the birthing. Put a, put a mirror on, on, a pat, on the roof of the porch, right above the nest, so then you could <laughs> all the activity yeah. there, you know. Sure. Even the, the building of the nest, you know, that was the problem. It was great. It was a great video. And, Let's and, take this. Hi, you're on the air. Hey, yes, Pat. Have you guys ever, uh, Pat's ever crossed? Why, huh? I mean, when you was a reporter, uh, 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 when you, you used to work at the Telegraph, didn't you? At the... Telegraph? Te no, I worked at the, the Courier in the start yeah, News Herald. I mean, yeah, have you guys ever met before? Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. You, you, you actually was my mentor, yes. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay, we're all buddies. Uh, so that's what I was wondering. Yep. 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 We go back a long time. <laughs> that's good because uh, I didn't know if you guys ever met. Oh, yeah. Uh, met before. Every, we used to talk every day in the conference calls. Remember those yeah. conference calls? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did he ever work for any other newspaper? Yeah, he worked for the Erie Times. He worked for uh, Gazette. Yeah. Gazette. Yeah. How was it at the uh, New York Times? No, the Erie Times. <laughs> Erie no. Times. How was that there? That was great. He liked I worked it. at the Bureau. I worked uh, uh, 10 years at the Meadville Bureau. He worked out of Meadville. Yeah. And then a year out of the Girard Bureau. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks, okay, George. Bye-bye. Okay, here's one for you, Dick. Hey, Dick, you look great. Are you ready to go to press? Charlie oh. Kitchen. Oh, there you Those go. Those were the good old days. I oh, remember yeah, Charlie. Charlie. You remember Charlie? He used to hide around the poles and sneak <laughs> it and peek at you. He <laughs> wild little guy. Yeah, he was something else. He, I'll tell you what, he knew how to run those presses. Oh, he yeah. He was good. Yeah. yeah. Dick, you know, newspapers today are not the same. Everything's gone to the internet. And uh, I don't know about you, but I get this, you get three newspapers and... Uh, I, I don't like reading them on computer. I like to hold a newspaper. Like that's how we grew up, yeah, and it's, what it's, I told it's not the same. Yeah. Yeah. Not I, the I same. really recently resubscribed the the telling. I don't know if it's telling you or not, but how I do five miles on the exercise bike every morning, and I can only do two and a half before I gotta, you know, take a rest. So I walk out to the road about a hundred feet away to pick up <laughs> pick the paper up. Give me a reason to get out. So of you get the you get the Star Beacon then. Right. I get the Plain Dealer, and they only publish 
what three or four times or, a week. Well, they you know? publish every day, but they deliver it. Yeah, only yeah. Four and days the papers here. are like this thick. Oh yeah, very thick. You know, it's, oh, there's no. nothing to them. No. And the, the News Herald or the Star Beacon too, not a whole lot to that paper anymore. I remember um, at one time the News Herald, uh, being a daily, had a circulation of five thousand, and I think now. Star Beacon's county circulation is around 10 or maybe a little less than that. And you used to be 25,000 in right. your day. And I think as I said that uh, when I retired from the Erie Times, the guys on the desk up there in Erie said, you lucky SOP. Yeah. <laughs> I think just because they could see, you know, that the things were changing, you know. Not, I mean, as I say, the Mies were good publishers and are good publishers, but it's just that it's not the same. I no, mean, it isn't. And, uh, and one of the things that I found, and I don't know if you know much about fracking, if you ever. No, but yeah, we talk about it all the time here. I was I love book, book TV, and I don't know that you watch that much or not. But they had one time the uh, the, the creators of the documentary called Frack Nation, and this was such an eye opener because I've been more or less an environmentalist all my life, but on the other hand, there are some things that that, that newspaper people, not just newspaper, but electronic media too, just get blinded by. I mean, we all want to say, have our, we live up south of 90 and so we depend on a water well, so you don't mm -hmm. want to, but there, there's a, it's a real education of watching that documentary because they wouldn't mm -hmm. talk to the people this town in Pennsylvania where uh, fracking was started and, and all this and that, and the lies that were told about it, you know, you know, the media didn't do anything about it. Yeah, it's different now. It's and of course, I, I would be very cautious, you know, if there's anything that, was, that uh, would threaten my water supply. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, you've got to stick with the facts, too. And I, I, mm -hmm. that was such an eye-opener, because generally speaking, the, the news media is pretty vigilant in finding the truth. And in that one, there's something about the environmental, Robert Redford gets up there and everybody eyes glaze over and they think, well, this has got to be the truth. I mean, you yeah. I mean, it's just, yeah. so. You know, Dick, uh, back in our day, too, we, of course, we were brought up by a very good newspaper family, the Rowleys, and they made sure that you had your quotes, they made sure you were correct and accurate. You didn't bluff your editorials when you wrote an editorial. If you were bluffing, they could figure it out, mm -hmm. and right readers could figure it out. We were brought up that way, and there was no gambling on speculation and that sort of stuff. Today, that's all oh, it is. I swear. And, the, and the internet is probably the worst place. Yeah, world. it it's is unbelievable that you cannot believe it a is. lot of things that are on the internet. I re I remember Dick sitting in a meeting with you in Painesville, and it was conducted by Bob Rowley, who took over the operations for his dad Don, who had retired. And Bob Rowley's telling us, and this goes back. I want to say the late 70s, um, we have these meetings, I think, was it once a week? I think it was once a week on a Tuesday, it seems like. I can't remember now. But he's telling us we are going into a change now. And he goes, there's going to come a day when you're going to be buying your groceries. You're going to be buying your stuff on the computers. And we're sitting, I'm sitting there laughing. I, yeah, this guy doesn't know what he's talking about. He had just got back from New York and he had a seminar. Mm. My God. Within what, five to ten years, he was right on the button, and mm -hmm. he could see it coming mm -hmm. long before I did. I mean, I had no clue, but uh, that, that's how major the change and how fast it happened. It just happened that fast. I don't know about you, I'm not a computer guy, but uh, I know enough to, I could put a newspaper out on it because I know how to turn it on and they shot and showed me how it's, to it's do it. It's ironic in a way, Pat, because here, I'm supposed to be a writer, and so where's my book? <laughs> it's on the internet. It's, a, yeah, it's yeah, an e-book. Right. <laughs> yeah, right. It's a computer book. Right. And uh, so, do you miss the typewriters? I've uh, I've grown accustomed to this. Do now. You? But I, yeah. I I missed the typewriter for a long time. Yeah. Uh, there's a romantic element to it. I don't know what it is about. It's the same way with, and this, I hate to change the subject, but trains. I don't know what it is about me and trains. There's a movie with a train in it, I just don't <laughs> watch it. My dad was a, before he went into business, he was a uh, machinist on the Nickel Plate Railroad. And uh, uh, then I, we lived, you know, on Furnace Road and just like the equivalent of a block or two 
of the Bessemer Lake Erie tracks. Mm -hmm. And that train, whether it was heading fast downhill with a load of coal or chugging uphill with, with a load of coal or a, a steel or iron ore for Pittsburgh, it was the thing that put me to sleep at night. And it's, I've always loved trains that way. And they had this movie on the other day, I know you saw Bill Boyd, the future uh, Hopalong Cassidy was in it. Oh with, yeah! With Ginger Rogers. I did see that, yeah. It was, what was it, called? it was called Carnival Boat or something, wasn't it? Yes, yes it was. And it was, they had these great train scenes. And you stop and think, Pat, what they've done uh, uh, with the special effects and so forth. Can you imagine how back in those days, Pat, how, how well they did those things yeah. with us? Because he's he's riding a log, you know, right. above this train. It's just right. Bill Boyd, who went by William Boyd, as we knew him as Hopalong Cassidy back mm -hmm. in the 40s and 50s. Uh, yeah, and, and I didn't even recognize him until they told me afterwards that it, that was him. You know, yeah. I, I, but I mean, I, our pastor is a real fan of Ginger Rogers, so I always give him all. <laughs> I had to give him this one too. Um, you know, you talk about uh, the internet giving out. There was a thing on Ginger Rogers dancing to "Staying Alive" by the Bee Gees, <laughs> and it was a it was a hoax. And yeah. and my mother sends this to me. Can you believe this ninety one year old woman's dancing? To this? <laughs> well, Ginger Rogers is not even alive. No, but, you know, know. Right. And uh, my mother believed it because she's up there. You know, she oh, wanted yeah. to believe that somebody could dance like that. You know? yeah. Do you ever get back here much, Dick? I really don't. In fact, coming through town, you know, coming through the Route Twenty because. I used to have a paper route. I had 130 customers. Wow! Can you believe that? Wow! Mm -hmm. and, and about 30 of them were over on the other side of the viaduct, you know, okay. down under and around in there. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, uh, I laid. I was also at different times the carrier for the plain dealer mm -hmm. in uh, Erie. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, yeah. it's a great, uh, and that's the thing I really regret about newspapers is that these kids don't have these jobs anymore because there's that's right. Don't, there isn't paper uh, boys. That's anymore. right. They don't have them anymore. They're motor They don't have them anymore. Get you, get you a, a little bit of a work ethic, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, that's right. And there, there was three papers, and a lot of the kids, a lot of kids had, the, of course, the News Herald. Some had the Star Beacon. A lot of them had the Plain Dealer, like you say, and the Erie. Mm -hmm. There's all these kids delivering all these papers, but not even. What do you miss most about the paper, newspaper business? If you had to. It's funny that Pat and I were talking about how we wish we'd have nightmares about, <laughs> about, about, or wake up from a nightmare of being late on deadline or something. Because mm -hmm. that deadline was so sacred in our business, wasn't yeah. it, Pat? Yeah. And, uh, what was the line, Dick? <laughs> if you're 15 minutes late in editorial, you're giving the composer room an hour if you're going to be late. <laughs> <laughs> and make, put it, the fear of yeah, God in. It was uh, almost like a biblical law. <laughs> That's yeah. But, yeah. But, but, uh, you, you don't miss them. On the other hand, it really gave you so much energy, Pat, when you've got that time limit to get something oh, done. Oh, the adrenaline flow oh, is amazing. I mean, it really, mm -hmm. uh, sometimes I, I don't get up and get around as much as I did before, and uh, I can never say that about the newspapers. I'm not that the people in the newspapers didn't have health hazards because I was a smoker for so many years. But did you ever take a habit up, did you? Oh, I had that and a cup of coffee was a, oh, yeah. Always... But, but I always remember I was working at the Star Beacon when I was cutting down, and I cut down to 10 cigarettes a day. And I don't know, it took me forever to get beyond that. And I <laughs> remember when I made that last cut, I mean, oh my gosh. You, yeah. You're, Concentration oh, it was yeah. just about that small. And nobody, unless you, you know, if you haven't Addicted. written for a, your livelihood, a cigarette and a cup of coffee, it just seems to make those words come close. Yeah. Yeah. It's all in your head, I'm sure. But, um, you know, I had a run in, not a run in, I had a, a meeting with uh, Dick Rowley. Yeah. Remember Dick? <clears throat> and uh, they were having an opening over here for one of the plants. So this is a ways back, this is a few years ago. And I walked up to him and says, do you remember me, Dick? And he goes, hey, Pat, how you doing? And he was talking to John Palo, who was uh, with the Port Authority. And uh, I walked away, and John Leader told me, and this is probably the one thing out of my whole career, <laughs> of all the years that I was involved in that, and we're going into 46 years now uh, being in the media. I, 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 Dick uh, Rowley told John Palo, as I walked away, he goes, there goes one of the 
the old time newspaper men that I remember and grew up with, and that would be including you and, and the guys that we all worked together. And that was a compliment to me that I'll never forget because, mm -hmm. you know, I really worked hard to impress those guys because they gave me the break that I didn't mm -hmm. really think I deserved at the time, but they gave me a break. So I, that, that will always, I'll always remember that. I know years later the family, Don Raleigh's family, had me do the eulogy at his yes. funeral. Yes, yeah. And I just remembered that he was a man of great integrity. You know? mm -hmm. And uh, but uh, he'd been around in, in that type of thing. He was good buddies with John Wayne. He was. Yeah, I didn't know that. They were. Of course, I know Arizona. They spent a lot of time in Arizona. They were oh, neighbors in Arizona. They lived oh, wow. to, to one spread apart, and he would go over and play, play poker on a Friday night with John Wayne, and I, I, would, I would I would just pick his brain, oh, you know. Wow. Well, there's a case where his brother died fairly young. Yeah, I think it was in his 40s, was, wasn't, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah very young. in his 40s, yeah. But I never knew that fact. <laughs> yeah, I was always fascinated by that. You know, yeah, I was fascinated wow. by that fact. And then there was Jack Kerger, who also worked uh, in, in uh, Ashtabula as assistant, uh, like assistant publisher. John Cole was the Cole, attorney. Yeah, I like John. Yeah, yeah. All gone now. All yeah. gone. Yeah. But uh, I, I just think it was such a great time to work in newspapers. Yeah. You know, because, as I say, just bred so much excitement. And, uh, and I'm not saying the Internet's all... Uh, Faults or anything like that, but there are just no uh, controls on whatever you, the people can put out there, you know, and, and with no foundation in fact. I gotta ask you this do you remember the one newspaper deadline that you put out the paper that sticks in your mind is probably one of the most exciting or most mm -hmm. toughest to do? Well, I think just working that. I was an editor then, but oh, wait, maybe. No, no, I wasn't editor, and I think the most memorable one was that of the Kennedy assassination mm -hmm. working there at the News Hero. How about when you were editor? Well, I don't really have one that sticks out. No. I remember that then I did a, the, a uh, editorial that had international, not international, but national exposure when I did one of this Valentine editorial I wrote to the members of Congress who <laughs> found themselves a pay raise. I mean, oh, oh no! Oh yeah. They, <laughs> 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 yes, did, did I got you get, syndicated. <laughs> did you did you get we a lot of Valentine, you know, on the editorial? Yeah. yeah. Did, did you get any uh, reaction? Reaction. Oh, a lot of people loved it because yeah. uh, at that time, I mean, uh, <laughs> they avoided uh, uh, responsibility. Sometimes this is not to condemn all legislators because some of them were obviously men of dignity, women of dignity, but it. Um, I think that's probably one of the most memorable times. You remember that? Remember the column you used to write? You always were, you were always trying to get helpful tips to save money when you were shopping. Oh yeah, I started out as is. Uh, uh, I'm trying to know what the name of it. Was. I can't remember. Later, I, I wrote one. Uh, uh, I guess I can't even remember now. But I worked at I worked at the Beacon or at the Erie Times. I wrote a, a, a weekly column down at oh, did Morning you? News. Yeah. Yeah. And, I, and uh, I really enjoyed that. I mean, all the, it was a humor column, so all the frustrations oh, I could put in. And I missed that after I left the business. I think of all the things I ever did, I missed that. Yeah, you did. All the frustrations I could put in that column about yep. and people could laugh at me, and I, I didn't yeah. care if they laughed. But, <laughs> but, uh, I remember our poor, poor, my three sons, terrific, terrific guys, and they each. Uh, are married and have a boy and a girl. Each has a boy and a girl. Is that right? And the, the two of the three were uh, had their families over at our place for Easter, and uh, the third one is down in Austin, Texas. He works for Dell Computer, but. Uh, How about the one that was uh, the car extraordinaire? Oh, he, the car. Yeah, he, he was a mechanic that oh, was well, one was, of the best. He is today. I mean, he doesn't have to advertise. <laughs> No. You know that a doctor and a mechanic have one thing in common. Once you find a good one and an honest one and a competent one, you don't want to let go. Mm -hmm. There you go. Mm -hmm. And that's that's the way it was. I safe. remember when he was a kid just coming up and uh, See, you Mike, could tell. Yeah, he worked at, uh, he was... Uh, worked over here. Yeah, he was the head of, uh, head of the, uh, uh, 
the department there. Mm -hmm. And uh, he, Grace Week kept giving him more money, make him, so he'd stay there. But mm -hmm. he, he finally says, I gotta start my own business. So Does he, he still have that business? Oh, he's, it's double, he's double the size of, no of his building and all that. Is he, say, he doesn't have to advertise. Is he still out by you? Yeah. Isn't it? Isn't yeah, it we gave him five acres. And I think we're going to give him the rest of the land too. But, but uh, he, uh, he does transmissions. That's about all the time he has. I'll be done. In fact, he just carried a, uh, took a load of uh, used ones up to Buffalo uh, for salvage up there. But, but uh, yeah, he, uh, he, he started, as far as local business, in our barn. We have a coal barn out there mm -hmm. behind our house, and that's where he started. I'll be fine. And uh, then he actually filled up. We had a clubhouse for the kids. He's got that filled with dressing. I mean, oh. now he's, he's got two massive-sized buildings, you know. and. Uh, uh, good for him. That yeah, he works too hard. Uh, that's the problem. How old is he now? He probably be his. Well, he was born in '66, so. <laughs> oh, he's just a kid. He's, he's, he's 40, 48. 48. Yeah. yeah. How about Marie? How's Marie doing? Real good. She. Uh, we're going to celebrate our uh, six or fiftieth on fiftieth uh, anniversary on uh, June twelfth. 2015. <laughs> next oh, year. next year. Good for you. Next year. Good for you. It was so funny because our pastor didn't give a chance for our marriage to, to last because <laughs> our different background. I was college educated, Marie wasn't. I was like 10 years older than her, mm -hmm. but uh, it was the smartest thing I ever did because yeah. she does a good way. You know what she does now? She makes uh, potato bags. These are line bags that you put sweet potatoes or whatever into the microwave oven to cook. Really? And any money she gets, she gives to the food pantry. Oh, Real for her. Yeah, we buy, uh, our, with our money, we buy mm -hmm. the materials and she does this. And she says, great therapy for her to be on a sewing machine. And wow. She, yeah. And she heads up, you know, for our church, uh, the, the, the group, the volunteers put together the funeral dinners or luncheons. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, so she's a good person in so many ways. Is she, ways. she retired now? Oh yeah, she retired actually only about two or three years after I, two years I think after I did. And, uh, but uh, she's busy. Of course we got the grandkids. And yeah. See, because I didn't get married until I was like 30, and our oldest son didn't have, they didn't, weren't able to have children until like, they were married about 12 years. I, all my peers have got great grandkids and I've got, Got grandchildren. Yeah, that. I have none. Like the youngest, I think, is like four years old. <laughs> <laughs> I have no grandkids, uh, but uh, I, as Michelle says, I would welcome that. I would kind of like to watch them on Saturday night. Mm -hmm. So that's what she wants to do. You know, yeah. of course, they go home the next day. Yeah, that's right. That's right. You're going to have them there all the time. Yeah. Well, Dick, this has been a pleasure. It's been sure fun. Oh, I'm glad you sure called me in because. Uh, I'm gonna make you a copy. It too. I'm gonna make a copy of this Great. so you and can can watch it with Marie and uh, maybe the family. Would like she can see it. my two shirts. Here. And see <laughs> my two shirts. <laughs> exactly, right. and I think it's class. That's that's Dick. That's the way Dick uh, yeah. dresses.